Funding for Reading Rainbow is provided by Country Inns and Suites, where you can borrow a book at our Read It and Return Lending Library and return it on your next day. Country Inns and Suites by Carlson, committed to literacy. And by a ready-to-learn television cooperative agreement from the U.S. Department of Education through the Public Broadcasting Service. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Butterfly in the sky I can go twice as high Take a look It's in a book Hi there. You see all this junk? Well, today I'm getting rid of it. Gonzo. Out of here. I'm gonna have a yard sale. I'm gonna sell all this stuff. <laughs> Look at this. Amazing. Yep, I'm gonna clean this place up starting right now. Whoa, look at this. My old watch. This, this was my first watch. I wonder how long it's been sitting in here broken. Still looks good. It's still ticking. Well, well, this isn't junk. I mean, this is certainly well worth keeping. Don't you think? I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold on to this. But the rest of this stuff, this is all going. All this stuff is, <coughs> is going. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Boy, wow, look at this. This is my old letterman's jacket. Look, it's got my name on it. Boy, well, it can't possibly still fit. I'll try it on anyway. Never know. Actually, actually, it's not that bad. Wait a minute, where is my book? Here it is, my old book bag. Boy, I wore this to school every day. It had all my pencils and pens, erasers and stuff. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm definitely going to keep these because, you know, these aren't junk. Just because something's old doesn't mean it's junk. I mean, you, you can't always tell on the first look. Huh. <laughs> look at this. This is really appropriate. This is a story about a whole town full of people who thought they knew when junk was junk, but this little girl, Theodora, made them take a second look. It's called Stay Away from the Junkyard. Stay Away from the Junkyard by Tricia Tusa. Read by Michelle Marianne. Theodora was arriving in the small town of Jasper, Texas, for her first summer at Aunt Maisel's. Aunt Maisel's housekeeper, Mrs. Percy, greeted Theo. I expect you'll keep your room tidy and by all means stay away from the junkyard. That odd-looking old man Crampton lives there with a pig he calls Clarissa. He's clearly mad. Now, now, said Aunt Maisel. He's still a newcomer. Nobody really knows him. And nobody's going to. The next morning, Theo set out for the vast, unexplored land beyond. Her first stop was Mud Dugan's General Store for a root beer. You have yourself a good time here in our proud town. Only stay away from the junkyard. 
The rumor is old man Crampton has no teeth, so he swallows kids whole. Oh. Lured into Miss Betty Ann's bakery by the delicious aroma, Theo bought an oatmeal cookie. Mind you, Miss Betty warned, don't set foot near that old junkyard. I hear the place is booby-trapped with holes so deep you could fall all the way to China. After playing a while with the kids in town, Theo headed north toward a nearby hill. Over the hill, Theo came to a stumbling halt. Before her was the most breathtaking sight. A mountain of glistening objects towered above her. Rummaging through, Theo found an old trumpet, a lampshade, a chandelier. She squealed with delight. Suddenly, the pile began to move. Out crawled the plumpest pig ever. Oink. What are you doing, little girl? Came a man's voice from behind. Clarissa, you all right? Clarissa! This was old man Crampton, Theo realized. She was standing in the middle of the Jasper, Texas junkyard. Old man Crampton stared at Theo. My, my. No one's been near here since I moved in six months ago. I... I was just exploring, sir. Well, go on and enjoy yourself. By the way, what's your name? Theo, sir. Well, mine's not sir. It's Otis. He smiled. Theo was shocked. Was this the man who swallowed kids whole? She summoned her courage and asked, Why do you live here? Otis pointed to the pile of junk. Because these are the tools of my trade. He winked and walked away. Theo set to work. She made a chariot for Clarissa and placed a crown on her head. For herself, she found a helmet and a magic cape. Most of the afternoon had passed when Theo waved goodbye to Otis and Clarissa. Bye-bye, Theo. When she got to town, Theo stopped at the bakery to tell Miss Betty Ann about Otis. But no sooner had she opened the door than Miss Betty Ann cried, What a sight you are! Don't even think about coming in here! Mud Dugan received Theo the same way. Get on home and fix yourself up. Back at home, Aunt Maisel listened while Theo told her about the enchanted kingdom she discovered and the friends she'd made. Well, said Aunt Maisel, Maybe people would like Otis Crampton, but I doubt they'll get close enough to find out. Hmm. Early the next morning, Theo returned to the junkyard. Otis was busy drawing. Otis, what is it? An idea I've been working on for a sculpture, and I'm going to build it right away, just for you. After a couple of weeks of hard work, the sculpture was finished. It was time for Theo to prove the town wrong. With Otis's permission, she took Clarissa for a stroll through town. Just as Theo had expected, it was love at first sight for the kids. Oink, 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 oink. They all followed Clarissa home. Music and laughter from the junkyard were heard across the town. When the people of Jasper, Texas reached the top of the North Hill, they witnessed something extraordinary below. The old junkyard had become a work of art, a world of magic and wonder. Following Aunt Maisel, everyone went down to get a closer look. Not only at the junkyard, but finally, 
at their new neighbor, Otis Crampton. Theo beamed at the crowd, and especially at Mrs. Percy. Well, as old man Crampton could tell you, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Well, okay, take this stuff, for example. Now, someone else might say that I should just throw it away. But I don't want to. So I'm going to keep it. I wonder what's under there. Well, there's really only one way to find out. Look at this! Whoa! Wow, I remember this. My best friend Steven and I spent a whole summer building this thing. Wow. I wonder if I can remember how it works. Or even if it still works at all. Let's see, there was a... There was a doohickey here someplace that I hid so that my sister couldn't find it. Wait. Wait, here it is. This is it. This is the key. Now watch this. This is very cool. It's a piggy bank. <laughs> Isn't that great? This is wonderful. I mean, I built this with my own hands. Hey. Maybe I should move this into the living room. Yeah. I mean, this is art. People should see this. The robbers drive up to the scene, hit the hammer, and pop up with the cash. But then they drop it. The cops race in to arrest them. And the money, see the penny, goes back to the bank. This was my treasure chest. Oh, Teddy. Ooh. Teddy, now this, this is an old friend I just couldn't say goodbye to. You know, no matter how old or how tattered, there are certain things you just can't seem to get rid of. Is there anything your mom and dad want you to throw away that you can't part with either? my teddy bear named Vanilla and my mom, she wants to throw it away and I want to keep it. My baby doll. This. And it's this. I love my monkey and I'll feel terrible if someone will throw it away. <gasps> Come on, I, I gotta keep this. You know, most of us save things for their sentimental value because they mean something special to us. But some people, some people save things for an entirely different reason. See all these odds and ends? Someone else might have junked them long ago, but not Michael Ives. Like old man Crampton, Michael is an artist. He saves objects and turns them into works of art. He pokes around in his backyard until something, like this old dresser drawer, strikes his fancy. Then he lets his imagination soar. Today, he's gonna make a story box. A story box is just an imaginary scene where I can create any world that I want to, anything I want. I think I'm gonna do a cowboy scene of some kind. How about a rodeo one? Yeah, maybe with a bucking bronco. That's, that's what I'll do with this one. Once I decide on what to do, I have to prepare the box. First, I gesso the box. 
Just so it's just a, a white paint that I put on the inside and it helps the colors really stand out and hop. To make this box, I'm gonna need a few different layers. I can find them all right here in my junk pile. When I was a kid, I hung out at my grandfather's a lot and I learned to be a real good scrounger, making something out of nothing, making it out of a pile of junk or pile of wood in the corner became a real treat to be able to do. Now I've got to sketch the scenes out on these different layers. Next, I cut the layers out with my jigsaw. This is where the pieces really start to take on some life. When I'm laying color down, especially big, large areas of color, it's fantastic. It's the greatest feeling. You can feel the brush underneath you. It's nice and creamy, smooth. Your hand feeling is going right along with what you're seeing, and it's just magic. Colors for me are truly joyful and exciting. Using colors is real instinctual. It's, it's a gut feeling rather than something learned in school. The next layer is the mesas and the cactus, and what I want to do is reflect the setting sun on them. I'll do this with an orange and a pink. The next layer is the grandstands and the cactus in back of them. These grandstands, I really want to be a nice, happy place, and there are going to be a lot of real festive flags hanging over the front. Sometimes I get great ideas from stuff that's just lying around here every day, like this can. Buttons, plenty of buttons, maybe the, great for the faces in the grandstands. This next layer is the cowboy and the bucking bronco. This guy's really having a good time. <laughs> It'd be a great idea to make these move up and down. That's what I'll do. This is fantastic for me. Making something out of odds and ends and junk around the yard brings a kid out of me. I love it. <laughs> this, this is my high school yearbook. Hmm. Let's see, where is my picture? There it is. <laughs> I can't believe this is me. <sighs> Look at this hair and these clothes. Boy, pretty scary. Hmm. What else is in here? Box with my name on it. Whoa. All these pictures, these have to be so old. Wow. Okay. Get ready for a trip down LeVar Burton's memory lane. There I am with Mom and Dad. I was a pretty cute kid. My dad thought so, too. Oh, my first birthday. There's the cake. <laughs> I like the cake. Oh, there's my bunny. And my first crib. Hmm. Christmas. Oh, look at that and always new books. 
me and my sisters Letitia and Valencia. Oh, <laughs> there we are at Easter time in our new outfits. Look at those glasses. <laughs> School pictures. I'm in the fourth grade here. Oh, my bowling team. I was a terrible bowler. This is my high school basketball team. I was team captain that year. These were my early acting days. I loved being in school plays. In my senior year, I was student council president. I still can't believe that was me or that I was ever that small. What is this? My, my peon book, my peon, my poem book. This is my poem book. Wow. I wonder how old I was when I wrote this. There's one called My Policeman. He is always standing there at the corner of the square. He is very big and fine, and his silver buttons shine. All the carts and taxis do everything he tells them to. And all the little errand boys, when they pass him, make no noise. Though I seem so very small, I am not afraid at all. This is where I kept all of my books. The Velveteen Rabbit. Boy, I used to know this book practically by heart, backwards and forwards. You know, there are some books that I never get tired of reading. I can read them over and over and over again. So, if you're looking for some books that you can read again and again, then here are a few that you can keep around forever. But you don't have to take my word for it. I've got a very special book for you to read. And it's special to me because my dad used to read it to me. And I think you'll like it too. It's called Make Way for Ducklings. This book is about a family of ducks. They're looking for a place to hatch their ducklings. They settle in the city of Boston. There's a lot of traffic that scares them. Can you imagine a policeman stopping traffic for ducklings? In real life, that probably wouldn't happen. I'm Melody Carter, and I like this book because it has a happy ending. Why not read it for yourself? Remember, Make way for ducklings. Everybody likes to play in the snow, right? I know I do. Hi, I'm Charles Stern, and I'm here to tell you about a book called The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats. This story is about a kid named Peter. One morning, he wakes up, and the streets are covered with snow. He goes out in his red snowsuit and has lots of fun. He makes funny footprints, angels in the snow, and a smiling snowman. The funny part is when Peter tries to save a snowball by putting it in his pocket, but it melts. Once you try this book, you're going to want to read it over and over again. So, snuggle up with the snowy day. Hi, I'm Stephanie Navarro. I bet you think all bulls are mean and like to fight. But not Ferdinand. He's in this book called The Story of Ferdinand. Ferdinand looks like a big, strong, fierce bull. But really, he's a gentle bull who loves to smell the flowers. All of the other bulls like to fight, but not Ferdinand. You know, this book is also available in Spanish. I read in both languages. Go, Halo, pick it up. Well, I guess I'm ready. Well, there wasn't as much junk in the garage as I thought. 
I mean, there was a lot of stuff, but it was my stuff. I couldn't sell that. But my neighbors are getting a great deal here. I mean, take this cup, for example. It's, it's a nice color. It's got a great handle. You know, maybe I could, maybe I could get some use out of this myself. I mean, it's, it's chip, but, but not on the lip. Now this, this is a handy item to have around. You could use it as, as, a, as a paperweight. You could use it as a doorstop uh, or a hammer. So why am I selling it? What, am I crazy? Now this is a good buy. A pair of sandals. A shoemaker could fix these right up. I mean, it's, it's not like they're out of style or anything. In fact, I, I could use a, a good pair of sandals. <laughs> Wait a minute. There is one thing I can get rid of. <laughs> well, I'll see you next time. Today's Reading Rainbow books are Stay Away from the Junkyard by Tricia Tuza, published by Macmillan Publishing Company. Make Way for Ducklings by Robert McCloskey, published by Viking Kestrel. The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats, published by Viking Kestrel. The Story of Ferdinand by Monroe Leaf, drawings by Robert Lawson, published by by Viking Kestrel. The Velveteen Rabbit, original text by Marjorie Williams, original art by William Nicholson, published by Doubleday. Doink. 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 Doink.